Hey guys, it's your boy Blacklands, and um, I know I've been gone for a while because um, I had a few things going. So I come, um, I had schooling, I had assignments, I had a lot of volunteer jobs to do, and um, things just to keep my whole uh, like bullets or whatever looking good. So yeah, that has kept me for the most part away from making videos and uh, whatnot. But I miss you guys, I miss the community, I miss YouTube, I miss the people that like my videos, comments, the ones that interact, everything, anyone that contributes to my video one way or the other. I miss you guys all and um, today I have a topic that most people have been asking me while I was gone so I figured that, um, uh, well, if you can see I'm still in uniform and uh, I'm off shift, I'm not on shift, I just finished. Uh, doing on like like some other type of job but yeah yeah and the topic has been what, what does it feel like or what does it mean to actually date someone in the military today I want to talk about a civilian dating a military person so it could be uh, a male civilian dating a female um, military person or vice versa which whichever one counts it's okay so that is what um that is what we'll be talking about today <laughs> that is what we'll be talking about today in our video and um and yeah that'll that'll be it uh, i just had someone uh walk in so if you're wondering why i looked there for a minute that was because someone walked in and they were just surprised to see someone talking to a camera with no one around so yeah so my first point, um, you guys will be far away from each other. That should be obvious. I mean, if you are going to date someone in the military, you should you should kind of expect this. You should have seen it from a mile coming that you guys are, for the most part, going to be far away from each other. So he's either going to be stationed overseas or he's going to be deployed to bases that he cannot come with you as a as a fiancé or a spouse or a girlfriend or yeah they just can't come with you so you're probably gonna be stateside home somewhere and it's gonna be thousands of miles across the world and one of the things that I found out is usually it is better if there is communication so if there is like phone call you guys can Skype do FaceTime all those things it's one of those deployments where you don't hear from them they are just gone for about 12 months or six months and it's just dead there is nothing with that one it takes a special kind of person to to still have faith and be committed and whatnot and just be like you know what i know i don't hear from him or her but i know some way somehow we are still connected and i'm waiting on them to show up at my door one of these days so the next point the next thing that uh drives home is there is little that you can do when they actually complain about their job. I just tell them about the challenges that their job has and they have no way, such, shape or form. They just cannot relate to what I'm saying. And I could imagine if you were married or you had a significant other or whatever and then um, you have to constantly tell them about your job. So you had a bad day, you had a boring day, you came back and you just want to talk to them and they're looking at you like okay uh, it's gonna be well um, they clearly have no idea what you're talking about because most of the time you use terms like leave had to be routed through my chain and uh, it, it it came back as not approved because I didn't have a leave number so because of that I can't go on leave and and maybe whatever my BH didn't come or this month my my paycheck for some reason like you keep talking about all these things and they are just like oh wow they clearly have no idea what you're saying so yeah I mean and um usually to usually uh, i just encourage significant others to ask okay what is what is what do you mean by your leave wasn't routed through your chain i mean is, is that i don't understand that so it's just good to ask your spouse or significant other about things like that and then with time the longer you stay with them 
the more you get yourself occupied with these things so now with time when they talk about it you know exactly what they're talking about and you're not looking all dumb and just saying okay so my next point is they cannot be by your side every single time so yes if you have um, uh, a significant other in the military they cannot always be there because sometimes you just need a presence of a man around in the house just like to fix some plumbing issues or just to help move heavy steps around or just you just need that physical the physical presence of uh, uh, your other half around and and most of the time they're just not there and it, it kind of forces you the lady to move out of your comfort zone because some ladies are used to oh he will do it he will fix it he will do that he will do this everything they just leave it to the man oh i mean he's the guy he's, he's supposed to know how to do this he can do this they just leave everything on the guy and vice versa some guys are also lazy some guys are lazy and they just leave everything to the ladies to do yeah so let, let me just speak for the guy side the other half can figure it out as i talk so yeah i mean you find yourself in situations where you just need a guy around to help do a few things and the guy is not there so it forces you the lady to mature and uh, kind of take up leadership roles in the house you kind of stand up for you occupy the the footsteps of the guy and just make those big calls or make those big decisions so my next point is tradition tradition will be broken so when I, what I mean by tradition will be broken is that so like birthdays, anniversaries, uh, very important dates and childbirth and funerals and you know these occasions that you expect your significant other, they are sad ones and they are good ones. The good ones you expect them to be there so you can celebrate with them and the bad ones you expect them to be there so you can you can have a shoulder to cry on now all these things um they they tend not to happen often because i've been around service members who just bench their uh, their their firstborn child bed they are not there for like the first three or four months and it's, it's just hard and then there are times that birthday parties anniversaries they are just not there because I mean the duty calls and and the mission is always first before uh, family I mean I know it sounds harsh but again they knew what they were getting themselves into before they signed up for so it so the next one is anxiety anxiety and stress levels <laughs> that is a big one that I usually see so say your spouse or whatever is deployed to Afghanistan or whatnot Iraq somewhere uh, one of those zones that are considered bad and then they are out there and um, you're watching your news just having a normal day and they, they are like oh a, a Taliban or whatever just bombed like half of a base in, uh, in Afghanistan somewhere and the, the only thing you can think about is is my spouse safe first of all I can't even hear of them they, they are not sending me letters, no phone calls. Now I just heard on the news that a, a base has been bombed. How do I even know which base they are on? Like things like that just stresses you out because you you never know when that moment to come where you have that that knock, that knock that no one wants to hear, that knock on your door, and you are presented with a flag and. Um, things from your spouse saying that okay I mean once you see that flag there's not much to be said your, your spouse is dead that is what it means so yeah it, it's just an all-time high stress levels especially if they are deployed to places like that I mean if they are not you I mean you care but you care less because you, your spouse is not there so it's not a big deal to you I mean you care for other service members out there but yeah that is one of the the anxiety or stress levels so if you like stress and anxiety you can deal with it I mean a service member is definitely for you so my okay so my next point is you might end up finding yourself making very adult decisions than the regular couple so I mean the regular couple you kind of talk it out with your spouse back and forth back and forth and then make a decision but dating a service member most of the decision will be left to you 
reason why because they are not around so for example if they were moving on a tdy like a temporary duty assignment or pcs good if they were making a pcs like moving from one base to the other and then you have the decision of having to pack the entire not, not pack the entire house i mean they are moving companies that will come to pack the entire house but it is your decision to fill out all these documents and where to direct the goods so if if you are living say okay you are living in maryland right let me use maryland as an example and then your spouse is deployed to afghanistan somewhere maybe his next base from afghanistan is somewhere in london lake in Heath or something so now the moving company is looking up to you the spouse to make decisions concerning all his items and where they should be moved to and it's just you're just having to force yourself into this military family where first of all you're just a civilian you have no idea what is going on so it kind of it kind of forces you out of your comfort zone again to go looking for information and contacting the base and just just taking all sort of steps to make sure that your, your spouse doesn't suffer the stress when it comes from Afghanistan just to come realize that half of the item, household items are missing where they you, you don't know you have no idea so it just it just kind of makes you want to make much more serious decisions so my next point is so as you the person dating the service member you need to be able to um, adjust. You need to be able to, to, to start all over again. You need to be able to be ready to pack and move at a moment's notice. So if you are someone that you just, you maybe say you grew up in a small community, so you just want to live your whole life in that small community. You don't want to kind of go around the world exploring you are you're just not that person then i probably say a military person is not for you i mean if you're on the other side if you're the person that likes to travel hey in a few years we are moving to this place in a few years you're moving to this place if you're that type of person then thumbs up it is for you because guess what you'll be moving around a lot and based on the job your spouse does some require a lot more movement than others there are other people that have been on base for five ten years and there are some of us that within a, a, a span of two or three years we've moved around about two to three times averaging one move per year and that is moving your entire household item so it just depends it just it just depends again on what um what conditions that you find yourself in so another another point that uh, I would like to talk about is you may not always fit in. Yeah, you may not always fit in because sometimes you go to military events with your spouse and um, you just feel isolated because the whole military thing is like a brotherhood. The, there is all sort of things that you're talking about and they only kind of understand what you're talking about and you're just sitting there like, is anyone going to talk to me? Well, even if they're talking to me, do I understand what they're saying? Okay, well, I guess I'm just going to sit here and uh, just kind of look around. Yeah, you'll find yourself in those situations a lot because uh, it, it's just going to ruin a whole conversation if I have to explain every single thing that I'm talking about to you. Like, it's just going to make the conversation four times longer. But yeah, um, it's just one of the things that you get used to you get comfortable with with time but initially you might feel that the you just don't fit in you don't blend in all so there is um there's a lot of rules uh which is this next point that i'm talking about there are a lot of rules in the military and some of it flows over to you as a spouse as a civilian spouse so um I know certain commissaries or, or certain bases have very strict dress codes and there are certain things you can wear. I mean, if you are just a regular civilian doing, living a civilian life, no one, no one cares what you wear. You can decide not to wear anything and walk around. I mean, 
well obviously the cops will care but a sign that no one really cares but then if you are dating a service member and you are with them on base or going to base to visit them on a, a strict dress code adherence is always in place so um, there are certain things you can wear and there are certain things that you cannot wear and if you even do wear them you just get this stare from other people other military couples looking at you like this is so indecent like what is she wearing what is he wearing i mean like you just feel you just feel like the spotlight is on you wherever you go so yeah i mean some of these rules and uh, like military housing or whatnot i know spouses especially the ladies like to decorate the house and make it look all sort of ways and paint their places favorite colors and all of that but in the military if you're living in base house and first of all you can't paint the house in the first place so the whole idea of painting just flies out of the window and um you can do all sort of crazy decorations in front of the house they just wanted uniform across everyone's house to look kind of the same if the grass at this height it, it cuts across every house's grass so i mean these rules are I mean they are not really big deal for me it's not a big deal breaker but some people just don't like to be put in a box so the next point is most people will see you as naive or crazy because sometimes just the whole burden of not having your significant other around for a year or two just drives you insane especially if you have kids so if you have infants and um they are their young age where they are proving stubborn running all over the place say you have even a lot more kids so that even makes it worse so you have four five children and running all over the place just driving you insane and um you don't have someone else to help you with all of this and uh sometimes people just get so overwhelmed like like the ladies i mean i know dads to get overwhelmed if they were in that situation but like again i said i'm talking in a situation where the service member is the male and then the spouse is the female so that is a kind of situation that i'm talking about i mean it applies to other other types of relationship but for this video i'm just talking about that so yeah i mean you might go to his base or even if you live on base you might go seeking advice or seeking help or whatever which is a good thing you're gonna get the help and advice but you know how people look he judge you in their head they're just gonna see this person and yeah this is normal i mean everyone is going through it you don't need to look all like your world is about to tear apart just because your spouse is not here they, they just expect you to kind of soak it in and take it normal forgetting that usually they forget that okay you are just a civilian and just being about your civilian life and they have seen this happen over and over again that they are so used to it okay so wrapping it all up i mean um i'll summarize it all by saying this this is the last of everything um dating a service member has its pros and cons obviously and um if you're the type of person that is just into new adventures moving to new locations exploring the world seeing what the world has to offer going on um fancy tours like all these things if you are that type of person and you know you don't you don't want to have the trouble of having to worry whether his job is secured or they can fire him at any time. If you're that type of person, then dating a service member is good for you. But if you're the type of person that don't want any form of adventure, you just want to kind of like um, have your nuclear family going, just settled in and in, in, in this place. She has her job, he has a job, the kids go to school and just this tight knit family then then a military person is not for you so that has been it guys um if you enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up don't forget to smash that like button kill it step on it do whatever you want to do with that um uh, like button and um 
but don't forget to subscribe to my videos so that you guys can be the first to always get my videos when I post them and don't forget to also turn on the notification so y'all can be part of the notification squad when this video goes up so you'll be the first to be alerted and um, I also have a giveaway coming uh, so you guys should be on the lookout for that I did one on Instagram if you don't know you can check out my page on uh, my page on Instagram is black lens black b l a c underscore lens and um uh, i do giveaways out there too i'm trying to do my first giveaway on youtube so just be on the lookout for that and um that has been it for today see you guys in the next one peace